Today I'm in Locke, California, and uh, this is the only rural Chinese settlement left in the United States. So kind of an interesting um, tidbit, and it's fascinating to walk through. They have this incredible downtown, uh, you know, I guess you call it downtown, just a, a little street of old buildings. Um, so why don't I walk through that area and then kind of voice over what, uh, you know, the history of Locke. We'll take a look down the narrow main street here in Locke and start walking around. This is the school. It's just kind of historic buildings all around you as you walk down the street. This was originally swampland and they had a, uh, it's called the Swampland Reclamation Act of 1861 in California, and they um, put to work a lot of poor Chinese immigrants to kind of uh, reclaim this land in terms of uh, make it farmable and, and useful, and they ended up reclaiming 88,000 acres eventually. And then a guy named George Locke, he bought several hundred acres here and there was a railroad that came through here and so that was the initial settlement was a place kind of a place of ill repute for all kinds of immigrants from all around the world it was a little bit of an international wild west uh, in the late 1800s and a lot of the chinese uh immigrants had moved to walnut grove which is just a about a mile or so south of lock here still a decent sized town and then they had a big fire in Walnut Grove, and a lot of the uh, Chinese people that lived there ended up moving over here to lock and starting the community. It really wasn't much of a town, but the, the Chinese took it over and really made it their own. And that's why it's called, you know, considered a Chinese settlement. And they built it up. Um, it, it became a, it, it was known as the Monte Carlo of California because there was a lot of uh, gambling and and alcohol during prohibition in this area. So both Chinese people and white people came here. And a lot of these, you, know, you can imagine kind of a wild time. There, there were, all these were businesses and they were kind of fronts for maybe illegal activities or, um, you know, bars during the prohibition time. And so it's really cool as you keep walking down through here and, and knowing what the history it was. And, and it, it continued to um, be a, a town. There was almost, almost 1,500 people here and so obviously it was a pretty decent sized town and and then um through the depression uh it, it started to get smaller world war ii it it actually grew a little bit and then after that it uh, started to dwindle down um you know and, and the young you know second generation of the chinese immigrants started to move away to the cities where there were more jobs than here in lock and so but as you can you know continue seeing it's just a really neat downtown area as we're getting towards the end of the main street some of these buildings are you know there's nothing going there going on in there anymore or abandoned and some of them um, you'll see when we go around the street you'll see these are like the back of houses that are on the on the main road uh, there's a whole history there, there's several places where they talk about the history of lock in the town and and this is kind of the very end of this main street I, I guess you'd call it you can look back that's where we started on the other end so then you go up around to the right around the corner and this is right on the river road it's a very busy road right here and so this is the other side of these buildings and um you know all the way down this street they you know whether you know they were probably businesses or um, you know combination businesses homes of, of people who live there and now I'm not sure probably what they are is that this is on the National Register of Historic Places the whole town so I think they try to keep the authentic feel and um, so that's that's pretty cool and then this this is one of the more famous signs the general merchandise store and so you'll see here as you, you know, this is the main busy road. And then right between these two buildings, we walk down 
and you'll see that we ended up right now back on the main street. So obviously that's a new little boardwalk there, but I'm sure there were lots of those kind of things um, that were that were available back in the day too. And then if you continue walking down, there's a couple of these different paths and this eventually takes you kind of to where the houses are. not to have too many expectations when I'm visiting uh, towns but whatever expectations I had for a lock have been surpassed it just has a very authentic feel uh, more than most places and it's on the National Register of Historic Places which is great it means it'll be somewhat maintained um, for other people to see so it's you know it's early in the morning on a weekday so there's nobody around these the businesses that are that are probably normally open aren't open. I'd love to come here when things are more open. So like here at Al's place, we'll have to check that out sometime. So definitely if you're ever in the vicinity of Sacramento, um, well worthwhile to come check out Lock California. As I head back to Sacramento from Lock, instead of taking the main highway and zipping back as quick as possible, I'm going to um, go on 160, uh, Route 160, which goes right along a river, kind of a winding river road. There looks like there's maybe a few, you know, old towns or small towns. Not sure quite, you know, haven't done any research. So we'll just drive through them and see if there's anything worth checking out. I'd say a good way to end the video would be cruising through the hood in California.
I'd say a good way to end the day is to <laughs> timing. Wait a minute, there's another one. said cruising through the hood would be a good way to end the video but I think I found a little better way to end this video so if you're not a regular visitor to in and out Burger you may not be aware that there is a secret menu so you can get what's on the menu you can get the cheeseburger you can go for the double double if you're hungry um, but you can order as many patties as you want so you can actually, if you're really hungry, go for a triple. But since I'm actually in California with our track and field team, I think I have to, you know, um, honor the sport of track and field with a four by four.